from Hollywood, the Hollywood Radio Theater. Starring Van Johnson and Captain Grayson in Ground for Marriage. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. Irving Cummings. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight's play, Grounds for Marriage, provides us with perfect grounds for some charming comedy, romance, and music. As we see a beautiful opera star to recapture her husband, and recreating their original roles in this metro goal when they are screamed alike, are two stars who can always be counted on for sparkling performances, Catherine Grayson and Dan Johnson. Now, the curtain rises on Grounds for Marriage. Starring Van Johnson as Dr. Lee Bartlett and Catherine Grayson as Ina Massine with Stephen Dunn as Chris. A few hours ago, a young and beautiful singer arrived in New York after two years of Europe and South America. Two years during which she's acquired fame and lost a husband. Her first caller is Mr. Herbert Delacorte. Manager of the opera company. Oh, well, Ina, dear. Now that you've told me all about South America, what about this apartment? Do you like it? Oh, I think it's beautiful, darling, and thank you for all your trouble. But am I just rich? Two weeks from today, you sing in Lucia de Lamamour. And no more worries. Oh, darling. Now, now, now. No need for emotion. We need you, and thank goodness you need us. Uh, have you spoken with your ex-husband? No, so what makes you think of him? Oh, well, nothing special, unless it's his picture there on the mantel. When I got your things out of storage, I didn't know I was resurrecting Dr. Bartlett. You weren't. I know. You don't mean there's a chance of your getting together again. Well, just between us, Shelley, I thought there was, so I phoned him from the airport. He hung up on me. Lincoln Bartlett is an idiot. <laughs> the patients don't seem to think so. I understand he's doing rather well. Any man who lets you get away from him belongs in a... Oh. Oh, what? What? <laughs> Uh, speaking of doctors, reminds me that I have to get a soloist for the Doctor Symphony. Doctor Symphony? Oh, yes, they're rather good, you know. Talented musicians as well as doctors. Uh, they give a concert every year, and naturally they tap me for the vocal artist. When is it, darling? Saturday night. Uh, they're rehearsing tomorrow night at the hospital. Oh, I'm sure that Frida Melvin would be glad to help them out. Is it anything I can do? Oh, of course not, only, well, it, it's that ex-husband of yours. He's their oboe player. Oh, really? Well, I'd like that, Billy. I want Link to know I've made good. Tomorrow night, 7 o'clock? Fine. I'll pick you up, I know. And stop looking at me like that. I know exactly what I'm doing. Gentlemen, thank you. Let us hope we get through it as well on Saturday night. Now, if you care to take a few moments, we'll wait for our soloist to arrive. Well, Agnes, did you like it? Oh, Linda, it was so charming. But you didn't tell me you had a solo. Oh, you just don't realize what a talented guy you're going to marry. For instance, I'm... Oh, no. Link, what is it? Oh, what a lovely surprise. Uh, surprise, yes. Uh, Ina, this is uh, Agnes Young, my fiancée. Agnes, this is Ina Massine, my wife. I mean, my ex-wife. Fiancée? Yes. How do you do? Oh, congratulations, I didn't know. But what are you doing here, Lincoln? Don't tell me you're part of the orchestra. Oh, well, I'm just... He's one of the oboists. You're trying, huh? Why don't you give up this horrible conceit that you're a musician and just stick to looking down people's throats? Oh, the years haven't changed you any, have they, Ina? But, but I you wish they, they had. had. Yes. Uh, well, uh, I'd like you to meet our conductor. A uh, doctor, I'd like you to meet Miss Massine. Miss Massine, how very kind of you to help us out. Doctor, gentlemen, Miss Ina Massine. Thank you. Thank you very much. I hope we have a wonderful evening. We have had to excuse our second trombone and the flute player, Miss Massine. Both obstetricians. But they have promised me faithfully on the night of the concert 
No baby. <laughs> and now, if you are ready. Of course. Hey, gentlemen, sempre libera from La Traviata. <laughs> Another emergency. Oh, no, no, of course not, Agnes. It's probably just enough. Don't your brother's home. Emergency for Dr. Bartlett. Don't your brother's home. so excited about? All right, Chris, what's the matter with you? Matter? The hospital said my brother called, an emergency, to get over here right away. But all I said was for you to get in touch with me. Well, maybe I did say right away at that. It's this new number, Link, just came in from the factory. Now, as my brother and eminent authority, I wanted your reaction. A toy ambulance? Mm-hmm. You called me from the hospital to ask about a toy? Well, you weren't operating, were you? I was rehearsing do they rehearse for operation? Uh, very funny. The doctor's symphony. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. You sent me the tickets. I gave them to my secretary. Oh, Ina's not going to like that. She's the soloist. Now, look, at about this toy ambulance, the fact that she says we... Ina? You say Ina? Mm-hmm. When did she get back? How is she? How does she look? Well, she looks like she might be a bit of a problem. All right, she met Agnes? They met each other. Uh, you know, you never did know how to handle Ina, you know. Oh, and I suppose you did. Well, if I may say so, yes. Yes, I did. Now, look, about my ambulance here. But Agnes is waiting for me, Chris. I sent her home in a cab. I promised to drop by and say goodnight. I'm sorry, Link. Maybe I shouldn't have called you just for this. But try to remember, it was the Bartlett Toy Company that put you through medical school. Well, send it over to the clinic tomorrow. I'll have the ambulance staff look it over. Oh. Tell Agnes I'm sorry I broke up her evening. Oh, she'll forgive you. Wonderful girl, Agnes. She's had great training being a doctor's daughter. What did she say about Ina? Nothing at all. What did you expect her to say? Oh, now, look. I just said that Agnes is a very understanding girl. You bet she is. And if you think for one moment that Ina's coming home is going to make the slightest... Wish me luck, will you? (laughs) Go on. Get out of here. Honey, Agnes. Don't you touch me. Don't you dare touch me. I was never in love with Ina. It was one of those kid things. You were crazy about her. You must have been. Well, how do you think I feel? Agnes, we're acting awfully childish. This is pretty silly now, isn't it? What do you say? I'm sorry, Lynn. Much better. It's just that I happen to be in love with you. And meeting her tonight, well, she's a very beautiful girl, and... It's pretty clear she's got designs on you. Oh, how can you even imagine that I... All could... right, let's forget it. Now, what was wrong with Chris? Oh, emergency in the toy department. Is that all? And for that, you had to miss Mademoiselle Messine's encore? 
Or should I say, Madame Fox? Uh, 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 I just can't get used to the idea of your having been married. Well, neither can I. It was different when she was away. You know I adore you, don't you, Agnes? Are you sure, darling? We've been engaged an awfully long time. Well, let's break our engagement and get married, huh? How about November? November 1st. Oh, they're about. Uh, we don't have to invite her, do we? Oh, look, Agnes, if you're as worried as all that, I'll even get someone else to play in the orchestra on Saturday night. I'll never even see her again, okay? Oh, Link, that's wonderful. How wonderful? Come here, darling. Let me go. <sighs> <laughs> he doesn't whistle that well. I know. Oh, no. How did you get in here? Same old way with the same old tea. Give me that tea. Whoa. I know. I'm expecting Agnes and Chris for cocktails. In your bathroom? I just got out of the shower. Well, then you better get dressed, haven't you? Ha <laughs> ha, that you two and be. Give me those shorts. Who could that short? <laughs> now, look, don't you think you've done enough damage the other night? You mean Agnes doesn't like you? <sighs> Oh, but she's much too mature to be jealous. Now, listen, Anna, don't try to start anything, see? Oh, what are you doing here, anyway? Well, you were at the concert the other night, and I wondered what had happened to you. Nope, that's a lie. I'm here because I can't get this silly face out of my mind. Oh, please, with that kind of talk. What's so wrong about my coming here, anyway? I know, I'm an engaged man. Well, I'd rather break up an engagement than a home. The only thing you're going to break is your neck when I toss you out of here. Where are you going to marry Having dinner with Dr. Young. Oh, yes. Her father's a doctor, too. Are you kidding? Only the best nose and throater in town, and yours truly happens to be his assistant. Have you slipped so low that you're marrying the boss's daughter? For your information, Dr. Young selected me from 50 candidates on the basis of my record and my <coughs> personality. I didn't even know he had a daughter. How long did it take you to find out? Well, it's... I wasn't love at first sight the way it was with you. You can say that again. This is solid. Agnes understands me, and we never fight. Sounds dull. Dull, huh? She's going to make a wonderful doctor's wife. So would I. You. You had your chance. You proved that opera and operations just couldn't mix. Well, people can change, can't they? Oh, change. Not you, baby. You haven't changed except in looks and size since the day you were born. Thanks. You're welcome. It's a good thing we called it quits when we did. Oh, you're just saying that because Sweeney has done something for you. Goodbye, Anna. Oh, I'm sorry things didn't work out better for us, Hank. I know now that what we had was the real thing. You think it was all my fault, don't you, darling? What does it matter? You're going to be a great opera star. If that's what you wanted, wasn't it? Oh, only I hadn't been so young when we were young. And you so unsophisticated. Unsophisticated? I'd call it sensible. Well, oh, that's a nasty thing for you to say. You make it sound as though you'd kick me out. Well, that's just what I'm doing now, sister. If you think you're getting rid of me this easily, you're crazy. This is the sanest I felt all day. And I know why you're so mad about Agnes. Because she's just a pale imitation of me. Pale imitation? Well, for one thing, she doesn't try to push me around all the time. You were born to be dominated, Link. Oh, I was. Yes, you're a real henpeck. And the sooner you realize it and give in, the better everyone else will be. Okay, now do me just one more favor, will you, pal? Don't try to louse me up. You're loused up already, pal. Look. Well, well, this is the right apartment, isn't it? Oh, Chris, uh, Agnes. Hello, darling. Greetings, brother-in-law. I know. How wonderful you look. Really? Well, I was just leaving, Chris. Only I did want to see my former relative again. Still in business to make little boys and girls happy? Uh-huh. And big girls, too. <laughs> Good. Well, make me happy and come to hear me and Lucia de Lanamore, will you? Every performance. Oh, one will do. You too, Link, darling. Oh, Thank uh... you so much, Mr. Steen, but we're driving up to Father's place in the country for the weekend. That's right. What day is it, your debut? A week from Saturday. What a shame. That's the weekend. <laughs> You're both so sweet. Well, goodbye, Chris, darling. Goodbye, gorgeous. Well? Well, uh, let's all think of something funny to say. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It better be good. <laughs> What is it? Oh, no, 
not, Shelly. It's nothing. I, I'm sure it's nothing. Oh, but your maid told me to rush right here to your dressing room. She said you have a sore throat. Well, it does feel peculiar. Oh, but I know you're giving a performance tonight. Your debut. Well, I'll be all right. I, I just thought if you could recommend a good doctor. I'm sure she sprayed my throat or something. Oh, I, I'll get him right away immediately. Now, now, now lie down, Ina, darling. Just, just lie down and rest. Well, but Albert, Dr. Young on the telephone, and, and, and have Freedom Albert stand by singing. Oh, Link, how nice of you to drop in. You? Well, all I said was it was... And all Delacorte said was to rush the dressing room. me. I was called here to see a patient. This is a pretty cheap gag just to get me down here. Now, just a minute. My throat felt peculiar and Delly sent for a doctor. How you made it, I'll never know. I told you I was Dr. Young's assistant, didn't I? Oh, you mean that perfect girl's father? Delly, say for him? We'll get him over here right away. He's gone to the country for the weekend, and I'm on my way to join him. And that perfect girl, if you'll just stop your clowning. You're the clown? I'm facing a debut performance, the, the biggest test of my life. And suddenly my throat starts to hurt, and I, I want someone besides a horse doctor to look at it. Sit down, Lana. Open your mouth. Don't bother. I'm sorry I started arguing with you just before curtain time. You nervous? Why should I feel nervous? There are only 2,600 people in that audience, and every critic in New York waiting to tear me apart. I feel fine. Sit down, Lana. Let's have a look at that throat. <laughs> Or don't you know? Frankly, I don't know. You spent 20 minutes staring down my throat and you don't even know... Look, Ina, when you were in South America, were you ever in the jungle or on a grain plantation? I don't remember. What's that got to do with... Did you ever catch a cold down there? Oh, yes, but it was nothing serious. What are you getting at? Blastomycosis. Oh, let's not be so medical, huh? It's a tropical disease, quite common in South America, but I can't be certain without a bronchoscopic... Meanwhile, you go home and get some rest, and don't use your voice. I'll see you on Monday. What do you mean, don't use your voice? That curtain's going up out there in half an hour. If you try to sing tonight, you stand a very good chance of injuring your vocal cords permanently. You're just out of your mind, that's all. So what's your debut? Is it worth the entire career that you've been building up to all your life? Well, if I don't go on, I won't have a career. Now you get out of here. Okay, but be sure to tell Mr. Delacorte what I've told you. The sign, huh? Yes, Stella? Uh, should, I, should I find Mr. Delacorte for you, miss? Yes, tell him to stop worrying. My, my throat's all right. Against medical advice, Miss Ina Machine went on in the tradition of all good troopers and sang like an angel. Oh, I can top that one, Miss Ina. Here's the morning globe. Ina Machine established herself as the brightest star in the opera's expanding firmament. 
And here's another item here, Miss Anna. It's about Dr. Bartlett. You reckon he's got a press agent? Why? Did he make another bad diagnosis? I can't tell you. He sure looks pretty good to me. Let me see that. Miss Agnes Young, social favorite to wed Dr. Lincoln Bartlett. November 12th has been announced as the date of the wedding. What right is he to do this to me? What right? But he must be insane. Miss Anna, what is it? He said I wasn't a good wife. He said it was all my fault. But it wasn't, Stella, it wasn't. Well, I'll tell you, Miss Anna. Look, it... look at him. Look at that picture of him. That silly henpeck face. No, I don't want to look at it. Take it down, Stella. Well, Miss Anna, you... You yes. heard me. Take it down. That miserable idiot. I hate him. I hate him. I... <laughs> Miss Anna. What's the matter? You're moving your mouth and nothing's coming out. Your voice. You can't even talk. Oh, Miss Anna, what do we do? What do we do? <laughs> In just a moment, we will continue with Act Two of the Hollywood Radio Theater. Make a friend, and you make an ally. There's a thought for you to keep in mind, as many another American has. A group of people in Seattle, Washington, thought about it and did something about it. The owners of a large knitting mill there discovered that they had an overstock of yarns and pieces of material which they couldn't use. Well, day after day, they heard on their radios and read in the newspapers how badly Koreans needed warm clothing to survive the freezing winter. So they decided to do something about it. They got together with their employees and worked out a plan. Although the factory ordinarily closed at 4 p.m., the employees volunteered to work overtime without pay several evenings a week to make up the excess material and yarn into sweaters, especially small ones for children. The result? Within a short time... 150 sweaters, plus other gifts from the workers at the mill, were on their way via the Marine Air Force to be distributed to the Koreans who need them the most. Those Seattle folks have found great satisfaction in their unselfish work, and they've discovered that by helping others, you help your country. Now, here's Mr. Cummings, our producer. Act Two of Grounds for Marriage, starring Catherine Grayson as Ina and Ben Johnson as Link. <laughs> A few frantic hours have passed since Ina lost her voice. Mr. Delacorte of the opera has sent for Dr. Young, who's dashed in from the country with his reluctant assistant and prospective son-in-law, Link Foster, now in the consultation room of the hospital. Where is Ina? What have you done with her? There was no need of her staying here at the hospital, Mr. Delacorte. She'd be more comfortable at home. But what about her voice? Well, that's a good question. Well, Link, I imagine you know this girl better than we do. Tell me, is she flighty, temperamental, emotionally unstable? You know what I mean. All I want to know is For what... instance, Link, is it possible she might have had a quarrel with someone? I mean, someone important in her life. What are you after, Dr. Young? Anything that will help us diagnose her difficulty. You see, I have a hunch. Functional aphonia. You... you find no evidence of blastomycosis? None whatsoever. Oh, looks like I was a little hasty yesterday with my diagnosis. Functional aphonia. Now, what's that? Well, aphonia or loss of voice may be diagnosed when no known cause is found. A, a nervous shock may produce it. Nervous shock? Yeah. Well, uh, according to her maid, Ina lost her voice while she was reading her brilliant notices in the newspaper. And at that very m moment, she, she saw the announcement of your coming marriage to his daughter. Oh, I see. Now we're getting somewhere. This is an emotional shock of some sort. Nothing unusual, but unfortunate that it should affect her voice. But when does she sing again? Well, functional aphonia is unpredictable. It's also outside my field of medicine. And my advice is that we get the best psychoanalysts available. Well, there's Isaac Youngmeyer. Youngmeyer? Yes. I'll try to find him right now. Oh, and thank you, gentlemen. Thank you for your help. Well, Link, that takes care of everything. Dr. Young... When a patient is being psychoanalyzed, he lies on a couch, relaxes, and talks. Well? How does a girl talk who's just lost her voice? Uh, yeah, I see what you mean. <laughs> well, uh, I'm no analyst, but it seems to me that she hasn't faced the reality of the breakup of her marriage. Am I right, Lincoln? Yes, Doctor. Uh, the very fact that the man who was once her husband could reconstruct his life more happily without her 
Well, that's upset her to the point where she imagines herself to be in love with him all over again. But it's purely her imagination, Doctor. Believe me. Well, she's still young and very attractive, and she'll find a new interest. And when her emotional security is restored, her voice will return. Just like that. And meanwhile? Tell Delacorte to forget Jung Meyer. I, uh, I better phone Agnes, hadn't I, Doctor? Uh, good. Tell her we'll be back in the country in time for dinner. Oh, as long as we're in town, Doctor, would you mind if I stopped off and saw my brother? Go right ahead, my boy. Go right ahead. Well, what's on your mind, Link? I've got a problem, Chris. A bad problem. Yeah, so have I. The siren on the new ambulance, it won't work. <laughs> it's Ina. She hasn't got blastomycosis. Well, certainly glad to hear that. It's a functional aphonia. No organic basis, but with deep psychological undertones. In other words? She can't talk. Well, why can't she talk? Because she's still in love with me, that's why. Well, this is the greatest piece of big-headedness I ever heard of. Well, if you don't understand, when Ina saw that the date for my wedding was set, she just couldn't take it. She plunged into emotional insecurity. Well, it's very interesting, if true. Subconsciously, she can't face life without me. Link, are you figuring to tell me that you, you are going to restore Ina's emotional security by romancing her? Well, yes. Baby. Oh, no, 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 boy, no, no. I couldn't let you do it. Agnes, your career. Ina's my wife, Chris, my ex-wife. I've got to do all I can to help her. I just can't trust the luck and time. Maybe I can uh, help you more than you think. How? Oh. Well, if the three of us were to go out together, no one could object to that. You mean gossip? That's right. I just think it's Ina and me. It'll work like a dream, Link. We set up a threesome first, and then little by little, you won't be able to make it. You see, emergencies, that sort of thing, you know. And if it's emotional security that Ina wants, I think I can handle her case very well indeed. Well, now I'm getting worried. Well? Okay, let's give it the 30-day free trial. Ah, now this is what I call living. You see, Ina, once we get away from my half-wit brother, things happen. Like what? Oh, there you go, trying to talk again. Now, look, you've had strict orders not to even try to talk unless your voice comes back to you naturally. Maybe it needs exercise. Oh, come on, let's just sit down and hold hands, huh? If there's anything you'd like to tell me, be a good girl and use the pencil and paper. Pencil? Oh, yeah, yeah. Now, let's see what's on your mind. Where's Link? Yeah. Who cares? I guess he must have been delayed again. It's been three nights in a row now, you know. Maybe his practice is growing. What are you writing now? I want Link. But I do. Oh, but I know you're a travel sophisticated girl, a glamorous star. What are you booting about a little boy like Link for? I oh, don't be ridiculous. Ten to one, he's out swabbing somebody's throat. Well, look, let me tell you about Link's brother, huh? There's a very interesting character. In the first place, he's been crazy about you ever since the first place. Alone, just you and I, Agnes. Oh, it's so good to be with you. I hope that after we're married, you'll be around more often. That's why I planned a quiet evening at home. Or is it too quiet, then? No, I was just wondering where your father was. Oh, out in the town with some of his old cronies. It's sure been a tough week. <sighs> but this is only Wednesday. Is that all? And don't forget about Friday, darling. Friday? Yes, my Friday morning club. You promise. Oh, Agnes, you know how I hate to lecture. Well, you'd better be there, dear. My girlfriends have started drooling as it is about Chris and Ina. I can't believe it. Why not? Well, for one thing, she can't talk. What do they do all evening? Chris talks. And what are you going to talk about, darling, on Friday morning? Oh, I wish I knew. Come on and give me some ideas. So, all in all, Ina, I'm forced to admit that I'm quite a fella. All of which leads me to... Oh, no. Now what are you writing down? Don't you realize I'm proposing? <laughs> Please find Link. Oh, you know, that's an awful rut you're in. Okay, just wait here, honey, while I tell it. Well, I told you, huh? Told you I reached him. Didn't you believe me? Why do you keep pitching for him? I'll never know. You've been burned once. Sorry, I'm late. My appointment kept me longer than I thought. Oh, well, tonsils will be tonsils. Oh, was it adenoids you said when I phoned? Well, whatever now that you're here. What's the matter with you? Drunk or something? I'm talking for Ina. Ina lost her voice, remember? Oh, well, thank you for being so understanding, Ina, dear. Uh, why don't we dance? Would you, Ina? Hey, wait a minute. What am I saying? Come back here. Come back. Good 
morning, Dr. Bartlett. May I come in? Oh, Agnes, well, this is wonderful. Hey, what a beautiful suit. Thank you. What are you doing downtown so early in the morning? I'm taking you to your lecture, remember? Oh, the Friday morning club, of course, of course. Oh, I'll be right with you, dear. Sure is a beautiful suit. You've already said that. Oh, did I? Yes, I guess I, guess I did. Darling, oh, uh... remember when you were over at the house on Wednesday night, and then you had to leave that phone call, that emergency case? Oh, yes, dear, of course. And remember when you asked about Father, and I said he was out with some old cronies? Father saw you, darling, in a nightclub. Oh, he did? Yes, dear. Oh. He saw you with your brother and I in a machine. That's not nice, Lynn. Oh, Ina's my patient, Agnes. She needs help. You're a nose and throat specialist. But apparently, your entire treatment consisted of a rather showy rumba. I couldn't help myself. You see, Chris had brought Ina there, and then... And I... then last night, did Chris bring her to that place in Greenwich Village, too? Marjorie didn't see Chris. She only saw you. You and your ex-wife. Uh, who, who's Marjorie? Just a friend of mine, dear. She couldn't wait to phone me this morning. She said she was sure it didn't mean anything... But you seem to be having such a good time, you and Ina. Uh, Agnes, I'm sorry, darling, but if I say anything more about it, it's just got to involve my patient. You bet it will. And knowing the way your father feels about the ethics of medicine, surely you must understand that what I've already told you is too much. Oh, why couldn't I have fallen in love with a hairdresser? They tell everything. <laughs> Agnes, can't we have a little more faith in each other? All right, Link. You're forgiven, I suppose. Now, let's get over to my club meeting. So, you see, girls, in addition to being a rather well-known nose and throat specialist, our speaker also happens to be my fiancé. And this morning, he's found time to tell us all about the common cold, why we get it, and what not to do about it. Dr. Lincoln Bartlett. Ladies and... Uh, ladies. <laughs> I want to talk to you this morning about a new field of medicine and its relation to the common cold. And there is nothing so common as the common cold. <laughs> oh, dear, please excuse me, doctor. Yes? The air conditioning. It's bothering you, isn't it? Let me have it turned off. Oh, no, it's fine. Thank you, it's all right. Now, you've all heard of the word psychosomatic. It's from the Greek psych, meaning life, soul, and somato, meaning body. Thus, psychosomatic medicine deals with bodily disorders which are induced by mental or emotional disturbances. For example, everybody knows at least one person who's worried himself into ulcers. His nervous agitation... Uh, it is rather breezy in here, isn't it? His nervous agitation over business or financial responsibilities and his fear of getting an ulcer, have elected him to the ulcer circle. Well, coal circles are a lot less exclusive. They ride the subway, they include the office boy and the second maid. Everybody belongs, including the Friday morning club. <laughs> now, if I, as a doctor, constantly treating all kinds of nasal and throat infections, were afraid of getting a cold, if I felt fear every time I was exposed to an infection by a patient, or if I worried... I would probably spend most of my life with a cold. But I haven't had a cold in two years. <laughs> Allowing for reasonably good health, I believe that the seeming immunity of doctors to the contagious diseases they treat is due to their lack of fear. Now, we all know people who are afraid of a draft. If they walk past an open window, they sneeze. Now, a draft can't give you a cold all by itself. But if you're afraid of catching a cold... Pardon me. <laughs> or if you're in an agitated emotional condition, other factors are conspiring within your body to make you susceptible to the germs we all harbor. <laughs> in conclusion, let me say that if you do get a cold, remember, all you can do is try to get relief from the symptoms. <coughs> you cannot cure the cold. Those drops are helpful if used in moderation. Aspirin soothes headaches. Muscle pain, fever, things that go with a cold. <laughs> Antihistamines may arrest your sniffles, but should not be taken without a doctor's advice. <laughs> Little attention need be paid to fluid intake if the cold is simple and uncomplicated, except alcohol in very reasonable doses, of course. <laughs> Expands the blood vessels and restores circulation to the chilled mucous and membranes. Are there any questions? 
But, Doctor, what are you going to do about your cold? Madam, I'm going home to bed, and if you succumb to your fear and catch my cold, I advise you to do the same. Good morning, ladies. <laughs> We'll continue with Act Three of Grounds for Marriage in a moment. You know, sometimes a soldier finds his greatest opportunity for service in something outside the line of duty. Such a man is Sergeant Werner Krenzer. He's been in the Army for eight years. He's known frontline warfare in the Pacific and occupation duty in Japan. As a veteran soldier, he's used to destruction. But he saw destruction through the eyes of a child when he was assigned to the United Nations Civil Assistance Command. This is a unit which provides aid for homeless Korean civilians. Sergeant Krenzer's heart went out to the hungry, sick, frightened children that he found everywhere. And then he got an idea. More than food and shelter, he realized these children needed love. And there were thousands of homeless women refugees wandering around, looking for their children, their families. Krenzer wasn't able to find each mother's own child, but he could ask her to care for a deserted wait. And so, these childless mothers took the motherless children and cared for them. And the women were given hope that their own children might find the same kind of refuge. Even though they still live within the sound of guns and planes, there's new faith and hope in their eyes. Such acts by you and your friends today are shaping our world of tomorrow. Pause now for station identification. The curtain rises on Act Three of Grounds for Marriage, starring Van Johnson as Link and Catherine Grayson as Ina. guest speaker of the Friday Morning Club has sneezed his way home and staggered into bed. Yes, Dr. Bossett has caught a bad cold. It's considerably later now, and the nose and throat specialist has just been awakened by a telephone call. Dr. Bartlett speaking. Link. Oh, how do you feel, dear? Oh, fine, Agnes, just fine. I know just how you caught that cold, that darn air conditioning. Oh, now, Agnes, don't you worry about... Oh, could it have been your emotional condition? I've been wanting to call you all day, but I had that luncheon and then the girls... Oh, it's just the cold, darling. It's just... But you're all alone in that apartment. Well... Can I bring you some hot soup or something? Oh, no, no, I'll just go back to sleep, Agnes. Oh, call me just as soon as you wake up. I will, dear. Good night. Dr. Bartlett speaking. This is Stella, Doctor. Miss Ida's maid. Oh, Stella, how's Miss Ida? Oh, she's fine, Doctor. She still can't talk, so she said she needed to tell you that maybe she took her out again for Oh, night. I'd like very much to, Stella, but I've got a cold. My, my, you sure got something. You tell Miss Ida that I'll see her in a couple of days. Goodbye, Stella. <laughs> Who's there? That's your Chris? Oh, go away. Let me, let me die. Link. Ida. I came to see you. Oh, now, there you go talking again. You you mustn't use your voice. Now, if you have anything to tell me, just write it down on a piece of... Oh, you already have. <laughs> Which would you rather have first? The foot bath, the hot soup, or the toddy? They're all ready. Oh, uh, well, but how did you... I still have it. Now, don't talk. Ida, you know I was just dreaming in there. I, th- I think I'll have my foot bath first. Where is it, Ida? I'll just get out of bed. And... Ow! You hurt? Oh, no, no, it's fine. Oh. I'm so hot, Ida. I'm so sick. 
Oh, no. No, don't be alarmed. It's just a head cold. Now, now what are you doing? Soup. Oh, soup. Well, I am a little hungry. Well, later, baby, later. You know, we've changed our theories about treating colds, Ida. Just this morning, I gave a lecture. Oh, I knew this was coming out all the time. It couldn't have been that air conditioning. Well, what's in the glass, Ida? Nabisco. Oh, I can't smell a thing. Huh? Drink it? Okay, I'll drink it. Oh. Ah. Quite an alcoholic content. Drink it all. Are oh, you talking again? This is the new theory. It stimulates circulation. <laughs> That's about all we can do for the common cold. I, uh, what else did you put in this drink? Huh? Oh, yes, aspirin. Very good. I know it was very sweet of you to come over. What do you mean? No, no. But it was still very thoughtful of you. Now, can I have my feet back, please? Oh, thank you. Well, you'll probably catch my cold, you know, within 48 hours. By that time, I'll be able to take care of you. Why didn't you have sense enough to stay home? Oh, boy, you sure slug that drink. Mm. Yes? Everything okay, Miss Arnold? That's the elephant to sleep, would you? You won't stay here. You are. Good luck, Miss Arnold. Now, what you doing? Gonna play the phonograph, huh? Oh, sit down, Miss Diana. I'll do it. You feel like bebop, ballads, or Beethoven? Well, what do you know? This is you, Miss Diana, right here on the top. The Ina Machine album. That's right. You sure you want it, Miss Diana? Ever since you lost your voice, you've been saying you never want to hear yourself sing anymore. Put it on, please. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Nothing else I can do? No? Okay, Miss Ann, I'll go out home. I'm so sorry I killed you. Are you all right? Of course I'm all right. You must have been dreaming again. What? Oh, oh, I dreamed we were doing Carmen. I was singing Escamillo and I stabbed you. 
you were saying, Well, yeah. say you had a nice man. And that's how I stabbed you. I... I know, you can talk. I mean, really talk. What? Oh, I did, I did. Oh, darling, darling. Oh, say it again. Oh, my darling. You cured. I cured you. Link. Link, you suppose I could ever... Ever sing again? Oh, sit down, Ina. I'll put on a record. No, no, don't. You'll never know unless you try. Now, here, here's one. Now, go on and try it. Sing to it. Anything, especially such an odd love scene. What's the clinch? But you don't understand. It works. It works, brother. How it works. Hi, Ina. Have faith in him, he pleaded. Don't come over, he said. Agnes, it's so simple. I can explain everything. No, I was afraid you'd say something corny like that. I don't blame you for being bitter, Miss Young, but I think that had to work out this way. Look, she talks just the way she always did. Sure she talks. Your father suggested this treatment. My father? It was a simple matter of applied psychology. Inosophonia was purely psychosomatic. I cured her. Agnes, you're not listening. My ears are working even better than my eyes. Uh, Agnes, I've been assisting Link here with this treatment ever since it started. Now, maybe I can explain it to you in words of one syllable. You I can... understand medical English as well as any of you. And what about the Hippocratic Oath? Doesn't it say something about a physician having to treat a patient regardless? Oath or no oath is the treatment of this, this prima donna finished doctor. Yes, Agnes, yes. Now, just a minute, all of you. I know this Link bothers better than anyone else in the world. I know, now, I'm And if not... you think you are making love to me just because of my voice, you're crazy. Ha, 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 you tried to stay away from me, all right, didn't you? But you just couldn't because you're mad about me. You and your, your, your psychology and your, your psychoanalysis and your, your, your psychosomatics. I hate you. Fine. You don't even know the difference between a psycho and a soprano. Well, now, if, if I may... No, you may not. But if I've got something for you, too, big brother... And when Linky Boy's rich, respectable, married to her highness here ends in functional heart attacks and, and, and psychosomatic ulcers, remember, she's the cause, not the cure. And as for me, thank you very much for the treatment. Rough as it was. Hey, you forgot your raincoat. And now that she's cured, Link, I suggest you restrict your practice entirely to the... Are you listening to me? Yes. I mean, he is. Do you want to marry me? Yes. I mean, he does. When and where? Darling, I'll marry you anywhere, anytime, anything that'll... What did you say, dear? Link, speak up, boy. Say something. Don't just stand there holding your throat. Chris, look at him. Oh, he's just too nervous, Agnes. That's all. He's got a lot on his mind. Talk to her, boy. Talk to her. He doesn't have to talk because there's nothing for him to say. If he doesn't want me, I don't want him. I'm not a doctor's daughter for nothing. I know your symptoms. It's a pity they're not fatal. <laughs> well, Link, you did that fine. Just fine. You know, you ought to be an actor. Now, what is... Oh, no. I'm the level, Link? You mean you can't talk? You mean you got that... that, that fun... Holy smoke. Why don't you know the do the shot? Oh, Link. Look, stay here. I'll bring both those girls back and we'll settle this right now. You, Mr. Bartlett. Uh, oh, hello, officer. Ina! 
Look, does this character belong here or doesn't he? No, I don't belong here. I keep telling you. I only left my raincoat here. It happens to be pouring outside. I found her out in the street talking to herself. Well, what if I was? I haven't talked to anybody in days. Well, of course she belongs here, officer. She's my idiot sister. <laughs> Thank you for taking her off the street. Well, keep her here. Well, Anna, look what you've done to my poor brother. He looks just as silly to ever, as ever to me. Well, sure, but he can't speak. You gave him functional aponia. Well, all right then. Physician, heal thyself. Now, if you just give me my raincoat, I'll, I'll leave this asylum and I'll... What did you say? You do? Please. I know. No, no. No, this oh. isn't the way I planned it. Uh, something's gone wrong. I know. I know. What are you doing? You're just kissing him. Well, if this doesn't cure him, you'll never tell him. Oh, you said it. This will always cure everything. <laughs> In a moment, our stars will return. An Indiana soldier by the name of Birch Bay, yes, that's his real name, carried a little excess equipment overseas with him to Germany for occupation duty. To be exact, he had $4 worth of vegetable garden seeds in his duffel bag. You see, Birch had been a star pupil in agricultural extension work and president of his 4-H club for two years. His military police company arrived for duty in the little German village of Hungen, here, Bert sent out word to the children that he had a job for them. Ninety turned up, and they represented 45 different families. During his off-duty hours, Bert laid out a garden tract on the edge of town in 45 plots, each six by 20 feet. He parceled out the seeds and supervised the planting. An astonishing quantity of vegetables was raised, and something else was raised, too. The morale of all the people in the village who needed not only food for their stomachs, but sustenance for their spirits. Such acts by you and your friends today are shaping our world of tomorrow. Now here's Mr. Cummings with our star. And here they are to receive our thanks for a delightful evening. Catherine Grayson and Van Johnson. so very happy that you have your voices back. <laughs> well, I can't sing like Catherine, Mr. Cummings, but it's the only voice I have, and I'm rather attached <laughs> to it. I understand you're returning to MGM to make a picture. Yes, and I'm thrilled about it, Irving, because it's Kiss Me Kate. Oh, Kiss Me Kate. Well, don't just stand there. Pucker up. <laughs> <laughs> I, for one, can hardly wait to hear you sing all those wonderful songs, Catherine. And what else else is going on at MGM, Van? Well, Catherine will find us very busy making lots of wonderful pictures. Surely you've already seen our new Technicolor production of The Prisoner of Zender, starring Stuart Granger and Deborah Carr. I've heard nothing but raves about it, Van. And I've heard nothing but raves about your play the next week, Irving. I'm not surprised, Catherine, because it's filled with action, excitement, and suspense. It's Paramount screen hit Submarine Command. And starring in his original role will be that excellent actor, William Holden. And as his co-star, glamorous Alexis Smith. We'll be listening. Good night. Good night. Good night, and all our thanks. This is Irving Cummings saying good night to you from Hollywood. Third in our cast tonight were Yvonne Patey as Agnes, Stephen Don as Chris, Walter Wolf King as Delacorte, Herb Butterfield as Dr. Young, Lillian Randolph as Stella, and Helen Cleave and Eddie Marr. Our play was adapted by S.H. Barnett from the Metro Goldwyn Mayer Picture, Grounds for Marriage. Screenplay by Ellen Rifkin and Laura Kerr. Story by Samuel Mark. Theater is produced by Mr. Irving Cummings. Our orchestra is under the direction of Rudy Schrager. This is Ken Carpenter inviting you to join us next week at this same time for another presentation of the Hollywood Radio Theater.
Radio Theater is a presentation of the United States Armed Forces Radio Service.